Another thing that was key in the development of, of disc golf in North Carolina was the arrival of Innova Champion East. Innova Champion Disc was based in California, and they have a very interesting history. Many folks have forgotten that Innova is a player-started company. They were disc golfers who were tired of not being able to get the good disc. Going back in the old days, you had rounded edge disc and a heavy disc made a big difference. Well, there wasn't an adequate supply of heavy discs so that every player could get some. So that meant that maybe not the best thrower was winning, it was the guy that had the best equipment. Dave Dunapace and Harold Duvall and Tim Selinski fought in of a champion because they wanted to make discs accessible to every player so we could find out who the best player was. They were based in California. The World Championships were in Charlotte. Harold Duvall, one of the partners at Innova, was in attendance as the defending world champion. A series of events unfolded that led him to settle here in Rock Hill, just south of Charlotte. And by 1992, he needed some help, and I was hired on as an employee of Innova. We would go to world championships, we would go to trade shows, would represent the company, would represent the sport. We did everything we could to grow the sport. We had every park official knowing by then what was going on with disc golf. With the impetus created in the 80s, once we got in the 90s, we started seeing courses pop up all over the place. The folks at Innova East would go to parks and rec shows to sell their wares and they made sure that all the parks and rec directors in smaller communities were aware of federal grants they could apply for. If they put a new feature in their park, sometimes you could get government grants that would allow you to do something else you wanted to do in your park. A lot of courses went in in some fairly rural towns in North and South Carolina based on the work that Innova and other disc manufacturers, I just happen to know about Innova because they've been so instrumental in the growth of, of things here in North Carolina. With that assistance, disc golf really took off in our area. Ed Hedrick still had the patent on the target and was unrelenting and unwavering in his refusal to license it. So it wasn't until the, his patent expired that Innova could start making targets and when that happened, disc golf started to just take off. We had built this effective sales force and a very proactive and positive attitude about disc golf and it just kind of mushroomed. Innova was developing in the backyard of Charlotte as a disc golf powerhouse. And then in 97, we of course came to the next world championships. Before the 97 Worlds, the previous Worlds had been run by generally one individual, one TD, would assemble a staff of 20 or so volunteers. For the 97 Worlds, we had a three-headed TD. We had three partners running the tournament. Harold Duvall was a TD, and his area was sponsorship, course design, and general oversight of the whole tournament. My area was once again scorekeeping and registration. And I did a really neat thing with registration that year that has never been repeated. I set up a system where once a player registered, I had an algorithm that would give them a T assignment that moment. And I sent back a confirmation letter that said, congratulations, you've been registered for the Worlds and you are third person to throw from hole seven in pool B on the first day. I knew exactly where they were gonna play from the get-go, and they all got confirmation letters in advance of the tournament. Let me get back to the three-headed monster. The third person that we had brought in, John David. John David was a significant player from Atlanta. So we brought him in as the rules official and the tournament director of record once the event started. See, leading up to the event, my work was done when the last player was registered. Harold's work was done when the last sponsorship dollar was dealt with. So Harold and I were able to play. We took off our staff shirts together 
and put on players shirts and join the gallery to listen to John David go over the rules and we became players. It was kind of neat in that regard. We built this whole tournament and then we played in it. As we were building this tournament, we went forward with the theme, it's going to be the best worlds ever. Leading up to 97 Worlds, I was a part of the crew getting stuff fixed and shored up. In fact, at Kilbourne, I had some tee pads that had erosion that I came in and put some stuff on that's still there today. I was a sponsor for Worlds in Charlotte, and we did sponsor lunch for staff. It was really cool to be involved in it. It was the first World Championship I've been to, to see all the different events that go on, the players meeting, the party, the awards that are given out, and kind of get a feel for it. To feed into the overall disc golf community like that kind of gave me a little sense of pride that what we've been doing in Charlotte, even up to that point, when we only had four courses. We had the resources of Innova. We had, by then, developed this disc golf club with all these volunteers, like no other club in, in the country. So we were able to put together this thing between two courses in Rock Hill and three or four courses in Charlotte. And all this organization had been put into it, it ran flawlessly. We really put forward an effort in 97 to make the best worlds for the players, which when you contrast that one with 86, when we saved the worlds that was almost lost and pulled it off by the skin of our teeth compared to all the prep, we had 12 months of preparation time for the 97 Worlds and just did a fabulous job putting it together. So by Innova's presence and the Worlds being so successful, parks departments began to open their eyes and say, hmm, I think I want one of those. And they just started springing up and the growth of disc golf was taking off.